Uh, hello, uh, this is Glenn Berry from Atma Environmental. I'm the principal environmental uh, consultant and today we're on site with Atma Environmental. We're here to uh, look at uh, the work we're doing on this development site which is located in Hawthorne. It's an inner city Melbourne uh, uh, suburb. Uh, it's had a lot of former industrial usage and uh, in doing uh, the preliminary work on this site, on this particular site, we've identified a number of industrial uses. Uh, a particular concern on this site is the uh, location of a former dry cleaning premises. Mm -hmm. Now dry cleaning uses dry cleaning fluid of course. This is a chemical called perchloroethylene which is heavier than water and poses some uh, uh, a, a significant risk to groundwater but also some particular challenges with how we investigate it. So we'll be looking at that issue and how we're mani managing that. Uh, we've also got uh, an underground storage tank which has been removed and we can look at that and uh, some other issues relating to asbestos left from the demolition process here on site. So I mentioned earlier that underground storage tanks were a concern on development sites and we do have one on this particular site. So for your interest we have a shot here of a tank which has been recently removed. The tank itself has been taken off site to an appropriate tank destruction facility. Once the tank is removed from the site we have an open excavation. Samples are taken of the floors and walls to ensure that any residual contamination left on the site meets environmental criteria. When the tank comes out, there may be impacted soil surrounding the tank which can be placed onto a stockpile adjacent to the open excavation. Samples will be taken of that stockpiled material so as to make some uh, judgment as to whether it can possibly be reused or to determine its off-site disposal classification. Well, uh, here I'd like to introduce you to uh, Rory McPhillips. Rory is one of my senior environmental consultants. He's been doing the uh, drilling here today. So, uh, Rory, what are some of the objectives in uh, looking at uh, this work? Today we are um, installing a, a network of groundwater monitoring wells. Uh, the aim of the exercise is to uh, further assess on uh, the impact of uh, known groundwater contamination on the site and uh, ultimately to determine whether or not uh, the historical dry cleaning use on site may have uh, been the source of this groundwater contamination. That, that brings me around to the uh, dry cleaning. Now, on dry cleaning sites, what are some of the risks in, in drilling those type of uh, contaminated sites? Well, it can be quite tricky, Glenn. Uh, we don't want to mobilize any contamination that, that, that may be in the ground uh, from, from one area to another and uh, specifically on this site from uh, the upper to the lower aquifer. Right, so how are we going to manage that uh, risk of mobilizing contamination from a, a, a level in the higher part of the aquifer to a level uh, in the lower part of the aquifer? What do we do? Well, we got we to seal the upper aquifer before we uh, puncture or, or penetrate through the intervening layer. And to do that, uh, we've uh, run steel casing into the ground uh, which uh, should penetrate off the upper aquifer from the lower aquifer before we puncture the intervening layer. Again, right. we some got? samples we've retrieved from the uh, monitoring well drilling here. This is a sample of the uh, Yarra River alluviums. It's uh, sand with minor clay, it's uh, non-consolidated sand. And that's where we think the majority of the groundwater is going to sit here. That's right. That's where we're finding uh, the uppermost aquifer is in this sand material. Right. Now, below that, we've got something else. Directly below that, Glenn, we've got tightly packed clays. Like this. Wow. And these are going to be the uh, intervening layer between the upper and lower aquifer. Well, I think that's good news for the client because that should penetrate any, uh, uh, or should uh, limit any penetration of this uh, Denapple into the lower aquifer. That's the theory. Right. And this is where we intend to set the casing to preclude yeah. any uh, downward migration unnecessarily. That's right. So the steel casing is screwed into this tight clay. All right. And then once the casing is installed, that should um, stop any water from the upper aquifer accessing the lower aquifer when we drill through the casing. Enable us to drill a bit deeper and get the uh, sample from That's the right. lower aquifer and yeah. find out what's really going on here. Yeah. Uh, finished our investigation of the upper aquifer. We're now setting the steel casing 
to lock off that part of the aquifer so it can't cause any uh, downward mobilization of the perchloroethylene. I mentioned earlier that asbestos on uh, development sites uh, can be an issue. Uh, it seems that on this particular site, when the wrecker came through, it didn't take quite enough care. Uh, and uh, what we've got now are uh, pieces of asbestos right through uh, the soil, left on site. So we're having to manage that. Uh, Rory, you found a few of the pieces uh, here that you've got. Yeah, Glenn, that's right. So uh, in summary, we've, we've got to ensure the, the proper monitoring and the OH&S uh, procedures are put in place to uh, protect our workers on site from potential risks from this asbestos cement sheet and also uh, remediation of it is going to be required prior to development of the site. Alright so we've been here on site in Hawthorne uh, we've been looking at the uh, goings-on we've uh, taken a close look at the hydrogeological assessment uh, particularly how we're drilling this aquifer and uh, the measures we're taking uh, with respect to the dry cleaning fluid that's been found here We've looked at the asbestos and, and we've looked at an underground storage tank uh, excavation. From here we've got to uh, sample the network of groundwater investigation wells that have been uh, installed, get those samples to the lab and wrap up a, a complete environmental site assessment report that can be used to audit the site and uh, have it approved for its uh, proposed future use.